What is going on, fam? Welcome to another great episode of Our Smooth Club, the show where everyday men discuss everyday topics. I am Arrington Gavin, and alongside me and my bros, my good friends, I have the founder of Dapalu Collection, Mr. Dapalu, and founder of Eternal Clothing Brand, Mr. Jonathan Jones. Fellas, how's everybody doing today? Good. Man. Awesome, man. Ready to kick it off, you know? Yeah, that's good. Look, you want to, um, on a side note, I was talking to a buddy of mine, and he, you know, we've all heard the term, um, Money doesn't buy you happiness. Mm. And he told me, he's like, you know, money doesn't really buy you happiness. You know what I said? She. <laughs> they can take care of some of my issues, which guess what? Will lead to happiness. So I beg to differ, ladies and gentlemen. Money can't. No, I'm joking. But uh, but it can definitely help. But that's not my topic. I just felt like bringing that out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I want to uh, bring to uh, bring to you guys is um, I was speaking with uh, Alvin and Cam um, after one, one of the recordings that we had. And uh, uh, Alvin had brought up a great topic to bring on to the show. And he was asking me. You know, should should politics be allowed in sports? Mm. And, you know, I and I thought about it. I personally said yes. And the reason why I'm glad he brought it up, because I was actually reading an article about um, he's a I think he's a current U.S. senator. His name is Tommy uh, Tumberville. And he um, he was a college coach for a football coach for years. And now he's in the politics. And he actually brought up the he said that athletes shouldn't bring in politics mm. uh, in sports. And to me, I felt like. Damn, I'm like, I, if I was your, if I was one of your former players, that would kind of hurt because you're kind of saying, look, I'm only good for just playing the sport. I don't mm-hmm, have a saying. Now, mm-hmm. uh, Cam had put out a good, uh, made a good point. He said, you know, athletes shouldn't be obligated to speak on any political mm-hmm, things, which mm-hmm. I mean, how can we can all agree yeah. with that? Um, but I, I, I do think that, you know, at the end of the day, you're entitled for your opinion. If you if you see something that, you know, not OK when it comes to politics, you should speak on it. Now, I mean. You them the uh, the player or the athlete will know how the outcome will be. Just like I'll speak on Drew Brees. You know, I think Drew Brees had uh, uh before he had retired, he spoke about I want to say like kneeling on uh, kneeling during the flag or something. Mm-hmm. He had got a lot of backlash from his uh, teammates and um and and still probably a lot of players probably don't look at him the same way. But you know they forgave him. He had a you know great season, so on so <laughs> on. So mm-hmm. so um. You know, I want I want to ask you guys: Do you think do you think politics do you think sports should allow politics you know in or do you think it should mesh in a sort of way? Like, what's your what's your thoughts? So for me, I'll simply say, the least vocal sport when it comes to anything politics is baseball, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And baseball is primarily made up of you know white men and Hispanic men, mm-hmm. right? Whereas the most vocal are the NBA in the NFL, mm, right? Mm. So it's kind of to the point you just mentioned a little bit where should they feel obligated to speak, right? Unfortunately, a lot of the issues that are quote unquote political are not really political. They're mm. more racial than mm. political, mm-hmm. right? The George Floyd, you know, the the killings by the police officers, right? Those are not political topics. Mm. They're race topics. Yes. And the sports that have the most African-American men are the ones speaking on those topics. Baseball, they got to speak on it because it doesn't affect baseball. You Mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. So in my opinion, and this is what we talked about, you know, previously, is if you have a platform, right, people are going to be listening to you. I'm not saying that you're obligated to, Mm. but if you feel comfortable, then do it. You know what I'm saying? Speak on it. Speak your mind. But you have that arena, right? Mm. And people are going to listen to what you say. Now, yeah, of course, they want you to just play basketball, don't, you know, just, just entertain me. Mm-hmm. Right. But as an individual, you know, you still have to get up, look in the mirror and just kind of ask yourself, you know, with everything going on, did I do what I could to help out with the situation? And that's that. that so it's, it's more of an individual thing. I'm not going to say athletes should be obligated to do it, mm. but if you have the platform and you're comfortable doing it, utilize that platform. And I like how you brought that example too. uh, I like how you brought that example too, because you know you just brought up statistics. Okay, in baseball, there's you know predominantly one race here and there. In football, that and that's the one that's always getting most of the heat. And and the, and the reason why I'll say why I said political too, because you you will hear a lot of politicians say I disagree with he said. You know when it, and and that's why I brought up as far as mm-hmm, politics. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, you know social issues. Sometimes they might have to be involved in the, you know, Congress, Senate, you and know, what's, the com- ones what's coming up in the election year. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Definitely. So I, that's why, I, why as far as um, as far as political. But you you nailed it around the head as far as it's race. It's, 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 it's a race. race issues yeah. That you, you want. yeah. Um, 
So I'm kind of like, they definitely, if you relate to a topic and something that's going on around the world, like how could you not mm-hmm. speak about it? Like mm-hmm. race mm-hmm. stuff. Like with politics, I guess what they want to call it, like how they had like the whole Black Lives Matter on like the NBA thing. Like I, like I wouldn't really care if they didn't do it. But like if the NBA players want to have something on their shirt, because you always spear people up in arms about that. It's like, it's for warm ups. And two, they don't even really show it on TV. You just want to have something to cry. But it's like they're wearing something on their shirt that they're yeah, trying to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that or like how the football players have like the thing on the back of their helmets, like the sayings or like like that. If they want to do that, then they should feel free. Like they should have been able to do whatever I think that they want. But like there's some things with like the um, organizations, like after the Derek Chauvin trial, like they put out their statements. It's like, all right, like we know that you're just kind of saying this because you don't want to have any backlash, but like mm-hmm. you don't really, like and, you don't and really kind of speak on you. Like I, I am kind of sick of people telling us how we can protest and how like, no. we can Preach voice it, ourselves. Preach it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> If you noticed it, then I've done my job. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm if it mm-hmm. made you feel uncomfortable, then I've done my job. The point of a protest, the point of anything is not to be convenient and hopefully you'll see it at your convenience. It's to put it in front of you, you know, so you think about it like we have to think about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Like every single black athlete, right, wrong, or indifferent, anytime something happens to a black person, they have to speak on it, right? Charles Barkley did an interview. He was like, why does every single time something happens to a black person, I got to speak on it? Right. And but yet white commentators don't have to speak on anything that happens to white athletes or white people out in the society. But we all have to speak on anything in black. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if you want us to speak on it, we're going to speak on it on our terms, not just when you want us to speak exactly. on it and when you want us to show it. Exactly. exactly. You know, if, if it makes you uncomfortable, that's going to mean that, you know, you understand that there's something not right. You know, so one big thing is like back when all that stuff was happening last year and they were pausing NBA and stuff like the NHL, like. No players are mostly from Europe, and they that was when they when the NBA stopped, they stopped too because they're like, Look, we don't live here, but there's something serious going on in this country, we need to take the time and like actually understand it. And of course, people like, Oh, we, we want to watch hockey because it takes away you don't even live in America. And it's just like, Well, some people who grew up in a kind of somewhat caring country exactly, exactly. sees that something is something going wrong. wrong. And that's what blows me because I'm like, I can't stand when if I bring a conversation, if I I pick a conversation with somebody and be like, hey, you check out the game and say, oh, I stopped watching uh, football because, you know, they're doing too they're much. Too they're, they're too political. They're too political. I'm f- like, oh, yeah, no, you can finish your sentence if you want. No, I was <laughs> pissed. I was pissed because I'm like, so I guess they're just only there to be your entertainment. Exactly. Right? I mean, I understand, you know, people used to look at athletics as um as a, 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 a safe but escape, escape from yeah. escape from the outside. But now it's like, dude. Stuff changes from time to time, okay? Accept it. Don't criticize and be like, I can't watch any football. I can't watch any basketball because it gets too political. Man, suck one. I mean, it's just, exactly. it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, how fragile can you be? Honestly, <laughs> like. I mean, it's just, it's, it, I laugh at it. I, I just, all I can do is just laugh. And then, you know, kudos, I, you know, to uh, Bubba Wallace, man, what he did. I mean, yeah. come on. And come people, on and, people uh, think that they're Lewis Hamilton. Pa- Hamilton. Lewis yeah. Yeah. People yeah. think that they're such patriots for doing stuff like that too, like burning your Nike. Like, oh wow, like, <laughs> yeah, thank and you. I, I, like, you are really going to show any more NBA games until LeBron James is out of the league. You're probably going to go out of business first, right? <laughs> yeah. So, good luck. If you're going to stand on that hill, hey, be ready to die. You thought we came so, here for your food? No, yeah. no, you got TVs. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you're not showing NBA. All right, we're going right next door. Like, <laughs> man, but uh, but guys, I, I just wanted to get that off my chest. Yeah. I appreciate Definitely. your feedback, man. And again, I love having these conversations here on this show. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, y'all, uh, before we go to our commercial break, if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, uh, leave a comment, all that great stuff. Also, uh, follow us on all of our uh, the podcast platforms that we're on, uh, Spotify, Apple, Google, all major podcast platforms. We truly appreciate it. We'll be back with our Smooth Club. The Apple Loop Collection is a full custom claw there located in Virginia Beach. Our goal is to give you a full custom experience. Follow us and schedule your appointment at DapperLoop.com. Let us create your perfect custom look for your perfect wedding, prom, graduation, or anniversary. Ha! Yeah! Yeah! The way these digging talk! 
Drake is irrelevant I heel kick Troy's Achilles And I shoot like Legolas And fly around Earth on Pegasus The throne is for the taking So I'm sending these messages No belligerent talk The cup is half full with a measurement The way I'm work these bars And it's like I had a regimen The boy rock solid like sediment Ten years till they see the legacy I don't like bygones be bygones Cause by the end the time's gone New to the game like Zion One push of a button this is Welcome back, our Smooth Club, the show where everyday men discuss everyday topics. All right, fellas. So, I got a question for you guys in regards to making it, right? So, what is your opinion of you know making it as an individual and also making it as a race? Like, what do you think for us, you know, in your opinion, is making it? Uh, well, as an individual, I just you know definitely success of. What my field that I do, I want to see a success in that success as a um, as a husband, success as a you know a son, a friend. I you know I that's that's for me you know, or, or and also just being a good example of someone. If I you know I I love to you know help others in need. You know that's mm-hmm. that's for one thing um, that I do enjoy doing. So if I can you know be of some help and a helping hand for someone in need, that's you know and I can see them achieve and do well and spread it. Then I'm like okay, I'm doing good now. As far as um. What was the second one you had? Like, as you know, so you as an individual and mm. also us as a race, like, Ooh. you know, as, as African-Americans, as Blacks, like, when have we made it? What is it going to take for us to make it? You know, I'll kind of give you my inputs on that, right? So, like you said, for me as an individual, making it for me is I've started a generational wealth f- step, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You, I, can, I can't be generational wealth, you know, because mm. it happens over generations, mm-hmm. but... I want it so that when the next generation, my children, are ready to start a business or begin investing or, you know, kind of ready to make that next step, they're not starting from the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you know, they say in all these rap videos, we got it out the mud and we <laughs> ten toes down. Like, you know, that's, that doesn't have to be every generation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then as far as a race, you know, for me, it's going to be when we no longer have to rely on other races when we have that complete circle Mm -hmm. where the money can rotate within our communities right and stay in the community as far as our banks you know grocery stores farms like it can rotate right now i'm not saying it has to stay within our community Mm -hmm. but i want that option to be out there right now as they say you know a dollar gets in african americans hands and within you know two hours it's out of the community Mm -hmm. right and then our communities suffer Right. Yep, and those yep. that are in power, you know, or should I say have capital, athletes, rappers, their idea of making it is going out and buying a mansion in some community doesn't really like them, mm-hmm. you know, or spending it on <laughs> a car and being a giant consumer. But they're not putting the money back in the community. They're not starting these farms, insurance companies, um, grocery stores, things that are going to make the dollar. Yeah, that, that, will, that will help help the community. Within too. the community. That, that, within the community because I know. Um, uh, it's it's not like a person like as far as um making it for me, but just as for me, if I can see our race making it, it, it is weird to sound like I don't want to keep on hearing like the first African American, the first African American, the first. I feel like the more I hear about that, especially like we're in twenty twenty one now, mm, I it, it, I'm excited, but I'm like why now? You know why? Yeah. Live? You know what and, I mean? And until I'll, I stop hearing that, then I'll and, like, and I'll tell you another thing, <clears> right? <throat> we're we're creating a stigma mm-hmm. within the community, right? Mm-hmm. A child, and I was this child that grows up in the ghetto, has no being of how they got there, but they're there, mm-hmm. right? And if everywhere they hear, you know, we got to get out of the ghetto, we got to get out of the hood, then they're going to want to leave because they're like, this is not a good place to be. But we have to change it so that it's not, say, an idea or it's a step. So it's, if you're here, if you have no choice to be here, it at least, you know, it's some beauty in being there, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Right now, the whole thing is, yo, the hood is this, the hood is that, so we gotta get out the hood. When I make it, I gotta get out the hood. Not, I'm gonna go back and help and mm. change the remember hood. What you, remember, remember, I gotta from. get out the hood. And that child who has, you know, I'm here because my mother or my father's circumstances, I'm here. You know, they may never get out of it, or they're in this mindset of if I'm here, I'm less than. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And we, mm. we need to change that. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. I have, I have seen like on Twitter a lot of people who they're kind of they're getting what you're saying, and like they're kind of trying to. Buy like the old rundown little um, a town in little Georgia, tan, a little town uh, in Georgia. duplexes and stuff, and they're like actually investing. I'm like young people, like probably like early 30s, 40s, 
So like I think like that's catching on now. So hopefully like the next ten or fifteen years, like you really see some some major changes and in those type I, of areas. I think it will too because I would say too, JJ. Um, yeah, you made a good point there because like with with the millennial generation. You can't tell us no. You can't tell yeah. us like, oh no, try again next time. I mean, if you tell us to do that, we're gonna keep on trying and trying until we okay, we hit a step. Cause I like I've seen I've oh what was it? It was um I don't know if it was the exact same story. It was like three three women, African American women. I think they bought like a, a a piece of property in this small town. They want to create their own city, town. like a like a legit own town. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. Cause I've, I remember reading a uh article about um Akon, Akon literally creating his own currency in his own like world or something. I forgot what the heck it's called, but um, you know, he's doing that in his in his, his homeland, in his hometown. Senegal, but seeing them yeah. do that, I'm like, okay, that's what's up. That is really, really awesome. Now we know it'll probably take a long step, but it's yeah, still it's yeah. a great like you you've said, got a generation. You've got to start. You know, that's it's right. not gonna happen overnight. It may not happen in a generation, but we've got to begin to take the steps. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of these housing projects that we see, like, you know, in New York, you know, the Queensbridge project, mm-hmm. right? That was actually created by LaGuardia, who was a he was a mayor of New York back in like the 1920s, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the idea was this was a housing project for the working class, working class white, mm-hmm. but it was for the working class, mm-hmm. right? Because the working class was in the city. That's where the factories were. And that's where, you know, all right, just small areas that they can go back and forth, right? But unfortunately, a lot of those jobs moved out, right? And it became the inner city as we know it. And the jobs were no longer there. We had the the, the war on drugs where drugs won. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just became not what it was intended for. But again, if we can have jobs in place, and, we, and, and I'm not going to lie, we have to change our mindset as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, not necessarily be comfortable, but kind of be okay with having a job that sustains, right? Got you. The community, right? You know, everyone wants to get a job. They get out of the ghetto and they move on. I got to be a baller. I got to be a lawyer. I got to be a doctor. But we need everyday jobs as well. Store owners, bankers, you and know. And it's, it's almost like to the point you don't want them to drive back to where they're from and show them that they got a nice car and then just leave. Be like, yeah. yeah, how y'all do? Y'all like this? All right, I'm out. Don't touch. So don't I'm, touch, a, I'm, touch. A, I'm a, a huge consumer. I got this $500,000 car, <laughs> but I'm not doing anything to the community that I, that I grew up in. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? The crazy mm-hmm. thing is kind of going back like with the project developments back, ways back Back when mm-hmm. is I realized that like there was like racism and like when they were building the projects like the black communities they never built trees there and so like if you think about it like your home is more hot or it's going to be more cold and whatever so like their bills and stuff were higher mm-hmm. and it's like that they purposely like just would not plant trees in like the black areas and neighborhoods it's, it's sad because you know you never realize how re- really how hard it really was I mean, again, like I'm speaking as a millennial because, I mean, for our age, it's like we haven't really read as much history as we, you know, as we Like they don't now. have yards. So like their yeah. value for their home is like nothing. Yeah, like, it's, crazy. it's just That's a place crazy. to go and come. That's crazy. But like I said, at the end of the day, I want to make, I just definitely want to change the mindset of what making it is. Mm-hmm. Right. I think some people have an idea, like you said, we're, we're beginning the process. We've got to continue the process and begin to change what making it is and also our idea of wealth, mm-hmm. right? Don't just get wealth and then begin consuming a bunch of stuff. Then you're no longer wealthy. You're just a giant consumer. Yeah. I think even like personally for me, like on a small level is like obviously being able to like provide for your family and stuff, but then just seeing like the kids who you just know, like even like their parents, if they just, they're always at that home thing. They never really experience anything like taking that kid, like your son's friend, just somewhere where they can see. Something different. Yeah, get out of that environment where they think, oh, this is just like how I like have to live. Like just opening their mind and stuff. I think that could be like one of the biggest stuff. It can. Definitely, definitely. Well, thanks, fella. Amazing topic. This is the R Smooth Club. We'll see you guys real soon. Rugged Evolution Beard Care is the hottest new beard care in the market. With 16 amazing scented bombs and oils, you can choose which smell you want to try with our new sample bomb and oil set. Or use the mustache moisturizer and our new leave-in conditioner. Don't forget to add a wooden comb to glide through your beard without snag. Check out our website at ruggedevo.com or call for a private consultation 855-848-30. 029. And remember, Rugged is the new smooth. 
Check out What's Going On Wednesday, a weekly vlog with co-hosts Arrington Gavin and Jonathan Jones. Hear them speak on topics such as sports, men's health, business, current events, and so much more. You don't want to miss as they tackle a range of funny and serious topics. Catch them every Wednesday on YouTube at Rugged Evo TV. Rugged is the new smooth. All righty, so our uh, guest this evening for the show is Mr. Corian Shaw. He is the uh, chairman of uh, Suited Movement. Um, uh, good friend of uh, Luke. We're going to be having a discussion with him just on the impact that he's putting on in the community of uh, the 757 Hampton Road. So we'll be back with our Smooth Club. All right, we are back with our smooth club, the show where everyday men discuss everyday topics. And our guest for this evening is Mr. Corian Shaw. He is the chairman of the Suited Movement uh, 757. He's also a host of a very popular YouTube talk show called Half a Million <laughs> Show. So my man, Mr. Corian Shaw, welcome, yes. welcome. Yes, thank you, thank you, man. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, no problem, man. So look, I, you know, you know, our, our, our my good good friend over here, Mister yeah, Mister Luke Cassie, Luke. Da- Dapper Luke. He, um, you guys work together with the the Student Movement, that's right, uh, seven five seven. And please speak a little more with the with the Student Movement, if you don't mind. Yeah, as far as you want to get started on how we got started, yeah, as a matter, absolutely. So basically, um, try to make it a little quick. Um, we started off, man, just trying to get some guys together in some suits. You know what I mean? Take a couple of pictures and do a little walk. It's not really of a march. And, man, just so happened it turned into a march. But at the time that we did it, it was around the time that George Floyd, you know, the whole situation was going down with George Floyd. So, man, um, like I said, man, I sent a couple of messages out on um, Instagram and no response about, you know, taking some pictures in suits and stuff like that to see how guys would respond. Mm. And I reached out to a good friend of mine, uh, Shelby, which is a part of Suda Movement. I reached out to Shelby. Shelby was like, look, man, do this. I'm going to put it on Facebook, and I'm going to see what happens. And, um, man, that was like within a week's time that he put it on Facebook, man. People were responding back, and we met up downtown Norfolk, man, over there um, at Waterside. Wow. Yeah, wow. man. I remember I remember seeing it on social media, man. All, I mean, all these... Dudes dressed to it. Yeah, like, Looking ninety some degree weather too, because I know it's hot out there that first day. <laughs> no, it actually it wasn't too bad. It was warm. That wasn't that wasn't a bad that day. Second one though. On um, that second one, yeah, that second one I we did. Right that suit. We did, we was in uh again in Norfolk, and this yeah. was when George Floyd. There you, you go. Know, mm-hmm. right, we were specifically marching for George, but we started at the MLK mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. memorial, and it was really symbolic. And then we kind of marched down to the to the scope. So the one thing, you know, you know, I'll ask you this, Corian, you know, like you said, you know, your intention was to, you know, get out there and, you know, just get, you know, the brothers out there and like let's let's maybe have a photo shoot. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, of course, I kind of have a, a insight on this, but, you know, from that, you know, it grew. It did. Right. And so now that it's grown, like, you know, what is your vision of where this can go and, and what the, the goal is right now? Right now, honestly, um, like it's something that you and I speak on all the time, man. It's changing the narrative. Mm-hmm. So yes, I want it to grow. I want men to know that it's okay to wear a suit. You know what I mean? And to, to look to par and like it's something we go by. What is it, man? Um, 
look to be addressed? Yeah, dress how you want to be addressed. Yeah, yes. Dress, like, okay, okay, dress okay, how you want to be addressed. Dress how you want to be addressed. Yeah, yeah. 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 got a couple slogans. <laughs> 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 That's trademark. I'm about to write that yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's one of those things, uh, Luke. And like you said, like we, we were speaking earlier that you know, student movement is not one of them things that we want to keep marching every time something happens. Correct. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, we're reaching out now. We're trying to do different events, which is in, it's in the making. Mm -hmm. Those things are coming. You know, but the main thing right now, we're just focusing on the main foundation. Correct. We're trying to get student movement had to have a foundation. This is why we, now we have a board. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know what I mean? And um, Luke is honestly the, spokes, the spokesman. For <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a talking man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so, don't, you don't need to ask him either. He, I got it, I got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so some, some, uh, some goals, Luke, to, to get on what you're saying, where, where a student movement may go. Right As of right now, I would say it's still in the making. You know okay. what I mean? And uh, I don't want to speak too soon on things and, you know, and it, it don't happen. But right now I say we're still in the making because, you know, they would tell you I don't make no decisions on my, by myself. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm mm -hmm. the chairman, the president of student movement, but they know everything. You got a squad, you got a team. I'm running through them. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. That's yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, you know, like you were saying, you know, the main goal of Student Movement 757 is to change the narrative. That's like right. we want to show folks that it's okay, you know, to, to wear suits, you know, it's, it's this stigma, you know, you only wear suits to church and work. Like, you know, no, that's not what we want. You know, we want to show that, you know, we are a group of professionals, right? But like you said, you know, literally, you know, George Floyd, you know, Donovan Lynch. Um, I'm sorry, the gentleman, Dan, and, and, Andrew, Andrew, Brown, Andrew Brown. Brown. Like these situations just keep arising. That's right. Right. So you have to respond and, to that and, because you have the platform. Have and that's the crazy right? thing. I'm going to cut you off. Yep, yep. That's the crazy thing, because what I was thinking, I'm like, I remember when you had, like you said, your your first march. I mean, in, in a matter of all these marches, it's what been like two, three months, really, all together. Well, at least for um, we we have we just hit a no. I'm sorry. It'll be a year in June. Year in June. End of yeah. June. Okay. It'll be a year in June. But honestly, it felt like they was back to back. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, it, yeah. It, it felt the like two it. were back to back. The Donovan yeah. Lynch and, and then that, the Andre yeah. Brown, they were back to back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. George Floyd was back last year when yes, you know yeah. that whole yeah, thing yeah. kicked off. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, like you said, you know, there's more that they want to do it assuming with 757 it's not you know just wait for something to happen and then let's do a march that's exactly. not the intention mm -hmm. um but of course covid environment yeah, everything right. going on right. you know we still want to be strategic you know and ultimately like you said at the end of the day we want to make sure that if we have the platform and there's something going on yeah. we're going to address it we're going to speak on that's it right. you know right. and you know to kind of just between me and you you know something that we conversation we had mm -hmm. You know, when Donovan Lynch first happened, you know, I, my May schedule was booked, mm -hmm. like April and May. But, you know, like he said, you know, we had the conversation. I was like, hey, fellas, don't wait on me. That's like, I don't want to be the right. one that right. stops it. Like, you have the platform. People are looking at y'all to say something. Mm -hmm. You got to do something, you, do something. you, you know? To, you have to. And yeah. whether it be 10 people, whether it be 100 people, if you have the platform, someone is listening I mean, you guys were on the news. Like, what was that experience like? You know, being on the news and Man, kind of addressing those topics. Times, I think a few times. Man, uh, it's to the point they call me now. Um, news Channel Three, seriously, man. Uh, Antoinette, one mm -hmm. of the reporters, will call me now. She interviewed you. Mm -hmm. She asked about you um, a couple weeks ago. To the point they ask me now: Is there anything you guys have going on so we can cover it? And I never thought I would be in front of cameras. The way I'm in front of cameras. <laughs> yeah, on no, serious issues. Serious. On I'm, serious yeah, issues. Know? And and it's, and it's I'm learning because in a minute, Luke can tell you I would throw him to the wolves. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They're looking for you. Right. But it's one of them things that like Luke said, you know, don't wait on him. Mm -hmm. And these last couple of marches, it's been Corian. Corian. And I'm like, man, is this live or what? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, but you know, you just gotta accept it and you that just shows the kind of impact you're putting not yeah. just on the community, yeah. but abroad, man. Yeah. Cause I mean <clears throat> Again, I, I mentioned to you off camera. I'm like, yeah. I'm proud of you because again, we're close to the same age, man. Yeah, you're, uh, part yeah. of, um, you're part of the whole movement of you're part of the whole movement of changing the narrative on yeah. thing, which I, which I mentioned with Luke when we had first started uh, this podcast. I want to help change the narrative. You see a, a, yeah. a group of guys that are you know business owners from all different backgrounds, yeah, men of yeah, color, yeah, yeah, all yeah. different ages. We speak on everyday discussion that What's goes on, really? yeah. and you don't see you know discussions like we're having right now, yeah. just about this. So I mean, 
I'm like saying, I'm excited to see what uh, is in the future. I know I definitely want to come out there in uh, uh, one of your uh, uh, any events that y'all yeah, have. I know yeah. I was uh, there for a short time when y'all had the toy drive. I mean, again, y'all do so yeah. many positive things mm-hmm, in the community, mm-hmm. which they which needs to continue to be shown that was uh, very in the community. Well. Oh, you know, it was awesome yeah. too. It was awesome. Yeah. And um, I mean, I mean, Luke, what's your thoughts on just seeing how the the growth of the pseudo movement? I mean, <laughs> it's it's necessary. I think it's definitely necessary. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that you normally see. Is you'll see the athletes out there, mm-hmm. you know, whenever they have something going on, you know, you'll occasionally see, you know, rappers and hip hop artists. Yeah. Um, but again, one of the things that we always discuss is I want folks to see everyday people yeah. that care, everyday people. You know, I've told Corey in this, you know, numerous times, like, in my opinion, you are very mature, you mm-hmm. know, for where you come from. Like, if if you would have just asked me just off out of it like this dude is like in his mid thirties you know what I'm saying just because the level of of you know just maturity that you carry around with yourself you know what I mean and and I told you that from the beginning yeah. and I think that's important you know you know don't wait for someone else uh, to come up and be like yo this is the way things should be yeah. you had that vision and regardless of you know your age and what you've been through and you've been through a lot and we've had that discussion yeah, as well yeah. you know. If you've got that voice and you got that, like, get it out there. Like, you have the platform. You have a platform right now. And it's an amazing platform. Mm, and mm, mm. unfortunately, we've had to address a lot of the negative things out there. But there are some positive things we want to do as well. We don't just, like I said, we don't just want to sit there and wait, you know. So I will ask you this, right? So kind of going, you know, next, I guess we're almost halfway through this, you know, year, 2021. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, what what are some of your goals? What are some things that you want to kind of accomplish, you know, with your own, you know, half a mil, um, the platforms that you have? Like, what yeah. are some of your goals and what you want to do? So um, this is going to be new to you, Luke. Um, I was going to address it to the organization pretty soon. But as of right now, man, I'm looking to host um, a festival in Elizabeth City. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Man. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, 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 so yeah. It's yeah. actually going to be, you know, brought to you by half a mil. You know, and I'm going to kind of have student movements to sister it, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, as far as, like, you know, support and to kind of b- put more exposure on our organization of us trying to do different things. Um, like I said, this festival will be free. Okay. Everybody will get in free. Did you hear that, y'all? Yeah. <laughs> free. Free food. Right. Free, free, free. Free, free, you know? yeah, free. free. It, it, it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Free, man. And like I said, I haven't put it out because I'm still working on everything. Um, the city approved it. Okay. Awesome. awesome. I had, um, Great. had Great. a meeting with the city, the chief of police, and the directors of the um, the um, oh, I can't even think of it right now, man. But everyone I had a meeting with was they approve and deny everything in the city. They approved everything. Gotcha. So there, it's up to me to put a date on it, and um, you know, as far as everything else, because um, it's gonna be big, man. Sound wow. companies, big stage, wow. lights. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, man. that's awesome. Yeah. Well, look, keep, yeah. definitely keep us posted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah, want to yeah. come out. Awesome, awesome. And, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, just huge congrats, and then huge congrats on your show, half a million too. I mean, that's Thanks. that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, how many? Yeah. How many? Uh, was it just finished a year? I think I saw your post. I just hit a year. Yes, a year. Awesome, awesome, year, awesome, man. awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's it's going good, and I'm not going to focus too much on that. But the though that is one of those things where. Um, I did that to bring men together mm. because Luke know I was talking about things that I dealt with with depression and anxiety, mm-hmm. those type mm-hmm. of things. It's a book I read called um, Cry Like a Man by Jason Wilson. I talk about it all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's one of them things that sometimes us as men, we're almost programmed not to show weakness, mm, sure. you know, not that's to true. cry, you know what I mean? Not to, to say when something is wrong because we always feel like we're complaining. But that's why I started having to know. Wow, wow. Yo, awesome. look, well, you, look, please come back. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. We're going to definitely. talk more about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, We appreciate you just putting, bringing out the time coming yeah. out here to speak on us. Uh, Where can we, you know, find you? Give yeah. us your plugs yeah. and all that stuff. No problem. Um, yeah, on Instagram, it's um, Mr. Corian Shaw. That's M-R-C-O-R-I-N-S-H-A-W on Instagram. And uh, on Facebook, it's Corian Shaw. On, on YouTube, you can find me at Half a Meal Talk Show. Half a Meal. Meal is with one L. Talk Show. Awesome, yes, awesome. Sir. Well, look, Mr. Corey and Shaw, ladies and gentlemen, look, we'll be yeah. back with our smooth club. All right, thank you. All right, it's time for some good bourbon talk, y'all. Okay, Majesty Bourbon, one of my favorites. It's a product of the state of Georgia. Majesty Bourbon solidly enriched as a premium bourbon choice of the peach state. An absolute showcase of flavor without a bite. Majesty's 80 proof offering has a medium sweet nose with a light vanilla and caramel notes. Finishing just with a hint of wood and spice. The experience is mellow, 
but not tranquil, providing the finish most bourbon drinkers prefer. Exponentialism is the goal of the Majesty Bourbon team, and with this, they have achieved it. Majesty Bourbon, available in all local uh, uh, alcohol stores, ABC stores, anywhere you can find it. Uh, yeah, drink responsibly. Man, well, look, that was an awesome uh, interview with Mr. Coran Shaw. Definitely a, a, a bright, bright dude, man. A smart guy. I'm proud of him. I'm excited to see what he has going. I mean, with the Elizabeth City uh, Fest coming on and stuff like that. He's doing a lot of great things in the community. Paving the way, man. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Well, look, fellas, um, I want to make a cheers. That's another great episode for us. But I want to make a cheers for just people making a difference in their community. Yes, I think sir. it's something that uh, we all need to discuss in that. No doubt. We are making a huge difference. Up. Cheers to y'all. <laughs> Yeah, have a good one.